Hello and welcome to another Intro to Programming and Database tutorial. In this tutorial we will going to be solving assignment number 4 part C. I know when I gave out this problem the reason was so that you could practice nested if conditions. So the problem was stated such that you needed to accept the following information from user, the department number, the salary and job code, and based on nested if conditions you were to display the commission rate and the commission amount for that individual based on their department, their salary, and their job code. And therefore what we have done is we build this form where we have our inputs right here and here are our outputs. Now let me go over the names of the text boxes so that you know when we I'm writing the code behind the scene. The first text box is called TXD department, TXD DEPT. The second text box which is for the salary is TXD salary and the third text box is txt job code. These are the three inputs. And the two outputs include txt com rate and txt com amount. Now the code is on the button. So let me double click on the button. So for our convenience, I already copy pasted the problem statement right over here alongside and tur turning that into comments so that you can see exactly what we need to do. Now before we start working with any of these if conditions we need to be able to first of all grab the data in the respective variables. So we will going to be needing three sets of variables for input. One will going to be the department number, the other one will going to be the salary, and the third one will going to be the job code. These will going to be the three sets of variables. Well, just by looking at the description, department number and job code are integer values. So we're going to drop salary out of the picture for this one. So we're going to just declare these as integers. And salary along with commission rate, because that's another entity that we need to figure out based on the job code, department number, and salary, and the commission amount we're going to declare these as double. Department number will going to receive its input from txt department job code will going to receive its input from txt job code and salary will going to receive its input from txt salary dot text. These are the three variables that we're going to be receiving their inputs from the three text boxes. The other two variables, com rate and com amount, will going to be figured out based on three sets of values, these three sets of values, and then we will going to be assigning them to their respective text boxes, which is basically what we're going to be doing all the way towards the end, where it says finally display the commission rate and commission amount in two separate text boxes uh, with appropriate labels. So this is where I'm going to be writing those statements, the txt commission rate eek dot text actually equals to the value that is in commission rate and txt commission amount dot text actually gets its value from commission amount. So these were going to be my final set of statements. So I've basically written my initial statements which include my variables and my variables which were going to be acting as my input variables and down below I have written my output statements where the output will going to be going. Now we need to be figuring out the rest of the logic which is the logic in between. And we're going to be going over this code in step by step. So if you notice, I have indented this so that you could see what lies where. The first thing that we're checking for is to check to see if the department number is between 10 and 18. <clears throat> if department number is between 10 and 18, only then we make the second check, which is for the salary. Now this if condition, which is right over here, which checks for department numbers 10 through 18, all the way down here is the otherwise for this department. The depart otherwise for all other department numbers between 19 and 25, 19 through 25, then this is basically what gets to be displayed. 
So that we have basically these two condition checks here. Either the department is between 10 and 18 or is between 19 and 25. I'm not going to be writing any error checking for this particular example. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my design and I'm going to just indicate to the user that please enter a department number that falls within this range just so that they know exactly what I'm expecting from them. So 10 through 25 is basically what I would like to tell my user that please pick a value within this range so that I don't have to write any ex extra error checks. Now the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'll be converting this logic up here into the code if department number is greater than equals to 10 and department number is less than equals to 18 then. So that's what basically my first set of logic is. The second set of logic is else if department number is greater than equals to 19 and department number is less than equals to 25. So those are the two main conditions I have to check for. So this is my first condition that I'm checking for if and this is the other condition that I'm checking for otherwise all departments within this range will going to fall under this criteria. Okay, so that is my outermost layer. Now let me start going into my first layer of department number falling between 10 to 18. The next condition that I got to check is if salary for anybody working within departments 10 through 18, if the salary is more than 50,000, that's one criteria. The other criteria is if salary is less than or equal to 50,000. That's the second criteria. And so these are the two criteria on which I have to be writing the code. The otherwise that comes followed is basically related to the top one. So I have two sets of conditions here. Either the salary is more than 50,000 or the salary is less than or equal to 50,000. So that's my second set of criteria. If salary is greater than 50,000 then else will include any salary that is not greater than 50,000. However, to avoid the salary uh, being a negative number, we can take this extra measure here and say, okay, else if salary is greater than equals to 1 and salary is less than equals to 50,000. This is just an extra measure that we're doing so that we are not working with 0 as a value. So this is one set of criteria that we are setting for anybody working in departments 10 through 18. So those are their top most priority. Either salary fall is greater than this amount or is less than or equals to that amount. Now if we go to the departments 19 through 25, they also have their own set of criteria. They have three sets of criteria here. One set says if the salary is between 70,000 and 120,000. The other criteria says if salary is less than 70,000. And the third criteria is if a salary is more than 120,000. So we could very well take the same idea that we have up here and then we can put this criteria here with an else. Now I'm going to change my conditions here based on of course we are working with different sets of values. Now in this case uh, anybody who is making greater than equal to 70,000 and anybody who is making less than equals to 120,000. That's one criteria. Let me take you back to my comments here. This is the criteria we are writing the code for. If the salary is between 70,000 and 120,000, it's basically we're writing the code for. The other condition is if salary is less than 70,000. So we're going to take the same idea. If salary is greater than or equal to 1, and if the salary is less than. So I'm going to take 
I'm going to delete this equals to there. So if salary is less than 70,000, that's the second criteria. And the third criteria will going to automatically be the only else possibility is now if the salary is greater than 120,000, but since it's an else, the salary could be zero or negative. So that's what we're going to be writing it as, as is else if salary is greater than 120,000, then you will going to fall under this criteria. So those are my second level of criteria, if you notice. So I've set my top criteria, which is based on the department number, 10 through 18 and 19 through 25. Then in the departments 10 through 18, there are two sets of if conditions. Uh, either the person is earning more than 50,000 or between 1 and 50,000. And then for anybody who works for departments 19 through 25, there are three sets of criteria. Either you're making a salary of 70,000 to 120,000 inclusive or less than 70,000, more than a dollar. And the third one is making more than 120,000 dollars. Now we're going to get to the next set of criteria that we have for anybody who works for department 10 through 18 and earns more than $50,000, now we have two more sets of criteria to look for. If the job code is 10, that's the first set of criteria for our first condition. If job code is 10, then there's one condition. And what is the next condition? If job code is anywhere between 11 if, if, if job code is 11 or 15, not between, it's 11 or 15. So let's do that. Else if job code equals 11 or job code equals 15. Now let me tell you again that we need to repeat the job code on both sides of or and we had to repeat the salary for example on both sides of and because OR and AND are lower priority operators than any of the comparison operators. So if I only use, just like we speak in English, if job code is equals to 11 or 15, if you write it like that, what's going to happen, the left side will be evaluated and say, OK, if job code equals 11 or 15, it will be like 15 against who? Because the OR is not evaluated until later on. So that is why we need to put on both sides the complete equation that if job code equals 11 it will then evaluate job code equals 15 and then both outputs are then or so if this is true or that is true either way the condition will be true if this is false but that is true then the condition will still be true the condition will be false only if both conditions are false that means if the person is working for a department other than 11 or 15. That's what basically it means. Now let's go and check the next set of condition that we have right in this approach. So here, anybody who makes less than $50,000, they have one condition, and that is they should probably be working for department 10 or 11, and the other condition is 15. So for that purpose, I'm going to simply grab this code as it is, I'm going to take help from copy pasting because I'm lazy. And all programmers tend to do this stuff. It's not just me. Anything that can be copy pasted, why should I reinvent the wheel? So anyway, the job code that we're going to be using here are 10 or 11. So we have either somebody having a job code of 10 or somebody having a job code of 11. That's this if condition. Otherwise, if somebody has a job code of 15, then. So that's the next set of condition that we have. So those are the two sets of condition if salary is less than 50,000. Now let's go down to the salary range for departments 19 through 25. If the salary is between 70,000 and 120,000 and if the job code is 15. So that's the first condition. If job code equals 15 then and 
or otherwise. So we have an else condition here. So that's that's one criteria that we have for people working within the range of 70,000 to 120,000. The next condition here is if job code for less than 70,000, the job code is between 10 or is is 10 or 15. It's not it's it's only if job code equals to 10 or job code equals to 15 then so that's one set of condition the other set of condition over here is otherwise which is basically will be translated as an else now let's see what else it has to offer then anybody, anybody who makes more than 120,000, irrespective of their job codes, their commission will be 5.75%. So we don't even have to write an if condition. Now let's start coming up uh, with our commission rates. So for anybody who works for departments 10 through 18, makes more than 50,000, and works for department code 10 needs to get a commission of 5%. Okay, so we're going to set his commission rate to 5%, which is 0 0.05, which is 5 divided by 100. Anybody who works for 11 or 15 gets a commission of 3.5%, so that's a commission rate equals 0 0.035. Okay, now let's come down to the next set of criteria. Anybody who works for departments 10 through 18 and make less than 50,000, if they work for departments 10 or 11, their commission is 4.7%. So their commission rate is 4.7%. And if they do not fall in that criteria, rather they fall in a different criteria, uh, which is if they work for a department or job code 15, then their commission will going to be 5%. Okay, so that takes care of all the salaries and job codes for departments 10 through 18. Now let's come down to 19 through 25. For 19 through 25, if you make uh, between 70 and 120,000 and your job code is 15, then your commission and your commission is only 3%. The commission rate equals 3%. And this, uh, if you do not work for department number job code 15, then your commission rate is even lower down to only 1%. However, if you make a salary between $1 and $70,000, then you will going to get a commission of 4% if you work for 10 or 15. If your job code is 10 or 15, you have a commission rate different than if you do not work for 10 or 15. So let me go back to the numbers again. If you work for 10 or 15, it's 4%. If you do not work for 10 or 15, it is 6%. So that will going to translate as 0 0.04 if you work for 10 or 15 and 0 0.06 if you do not work for 10 or 15. Now coming down to if you make more than 120,000, it doesn't matter what your job code is, your commission rate will going to be 5.75%. Okay, <clears throat> these are the commission rates that we have here based on the criteria that we have been given. Now we need to be able to calculate these commission rates and um, uh, we need to be able to calculate the commission amount. So for now I'm just getting rid of all these extra comments. Just so that my code is right next to my code. So I got rid of all these extra comments from in between. Now this is where I can be calculating my commission amount. My commission amount will going to be the salary times 
times the commission rate. So that will going to be the commission amount. And the salary is the input that it comes from the user. So we're going to times those two values to get things this way. Okay, so now we are ready to run this program. We have pretty much uh, uh, coded every little instruction that was asked us to include in this program. So we are now ready to run it. So when I run this, let's say if I say the person works for department number 10. So they work for department number 10. So it automatically falls under this if condition. And let's say the salary is 100,000. So that 100,000 salary fall within this criteria if salary is greater than 50,000. And they work for job code number 10. So that means their commission rate should be 5%, and 5% 5 of 100,000 is $5,000. So if I click here, here I go, my commission rate is 5%, and the commission amount is $5,000. So this basically, uh, this was one of the tests that I ran with the values to check to see that is actually flowing through the correct logic. Now there is something that you can do in Microsoft Visual Basic to convert a decimal into its percent equivalent. So that's why I scroll down to where my commission rate is to be assigned to the commission rate text box. And right here I can call the toString function and pass it the lowercase p as a parameter or a value to toString. So this will going to take my commission rate, which will going to be a decimal value, and I'm going to convert it into a percent. And I'm going to add a percent symbol to the output. Let's test it with the exact same values that I just entered. So I had my department number as 10, my salary as 100,000 as a value, and the job code being 10. As soon as we click the button, here you can see it's 5%, so it converts the 0.05 to a 5%, and the commission amount is 5,000. Just like you can convert a decimal to a percent value, very similar, you can also convert it into a currency format. So I want my commission amount to be in a currency format. So let's try to run it again with the exact same set of values so that you could see the output. So here we have department 10 salary of 100,000 and the job code of 10 and here you go the commission rate is in percent and the commission amount is in dollar those were not the requirements is just something that I'll, I thought I will share with you so that pretty much sums up this assignment hope you enjoy doing it and let me know if you have any question thank you for watching